So I'm going to be talking about uh, topological uh, transitions of Claudia threefolds. So uh, our discussion is going to start um, by considering X to be a compact Taylor. Uh, Claudia threefold. Um, by Claudio, I mean uh, it has trivial canonical bundle. And um, to start, we're going to assume this is a Taylor complex manifold. Mm. So this thing has uh, some Hodge numbers. And um, so there's two, there's a lot of symmetries. Oh, let's also assume <coughs> X is simply connected. So um, there are just two independent uh, Hodge numbers, two parameters. There's the H11 and the H21. And the Hodge diamond and all the other <clears throat> um, Hodge numbers are determined. And so this parameter H11 is uh, representing, it's called the Taylor moduli telling you how you can move the Kähler metric. And this is one is telling us the complex moduli, how you can move the complex structure. We have a Kähler threefold, we get these two parameters. And what we want to try to understand is this whole parameter space. Um, in particular, I want to talk about a mechanism for how you could move from one Calabial with certain Hodge numbers to another <clears throat> with different Hodge, Hodge numbers. So we wanna talk about a sort of um, extreme uh, deformation, <clears throat> a deformation procedure, which would uh, allow you to pass from one threefold to another, but with different Hodge numbers. And the broad theme that we're uh, gonna be looking at is uh, geometric structures on Calabial threefolds. And we wanna understand how these structures are gonna move as we pass through such a deformation. And um, the big dream picture is that uh, hopefully in <clears throat> suitable topology are the right geometric objects that we would look at would vary continuously along this transition, even though the Hodge numbers would jump. That's kind of a big broad uh, program. So, um, so this was this kind of a deformation procedure to pass between threefolds of um, different Hodge numbers was developed both in the algebraic geometry community and the physics community. So on the uh, algebraic geometry side, this is uh, worked by Reed and Friedman. And uh, in the string theory community, there's a program proposed by Candelas Green. And, uh, also Candelas and De La Osa. And also Strominger and many others. And this is all um, fit into the broad theme of uh, how to travel in this parameter space. So what's such mechanism uh, that would allow us to move from one to the other? So this is, <clears throat> this is called a conifold transition. It's a way to do that. So let's describe what is it? Conifold transition. So we begin with X. And the first step is to look for special sub manifolds, uh, we're going to look for holomorphic curves. Um, for this particular type of transition, this conifold transition, what we're looking for are uh, minus one, minus one curves. They, uh, their normal bundle has two normal directions and they're all, uh, so they're P1s and their normal bundles are O minus one uh, in the two normal directions. So what I mean here is there's a five holomorphism <clears throat> of this neighborhood 
with a neighborhood of the zero section, the O minus one plus O minus one bundle over P1. The neighborhood of the zero section by homomorphic with the neighborhood of this, this is cutting out the zero section is the P1. And then we have these two like O minus one minus one directions. Okay, so once we find these holomorphic curves, so the conifold transition is a two-step process. First step is a contraction. So we're going to send these curves, contract them points, and this is going to produce a singular space. Let's call this X underline. We're going to contract this zero section of this thing to a point. And with a change of variables, you can see exactly what kind of singularity this is going to produce here. Um, it's, this is locally going to look like the sum of zi squared is equal to zero. Uh, inside of like C4. So this is a. <clears throat> This contraction produces a singular space, but uh, it's nodal singularities. Do you have to do all of them at once, or can I actually do one at a time? Yeah, that's right. So let's let's um, talk about this in a second. Okay, sorry. Uh, right now, let's do them all. Let's let's just. Uh, but now, question maybe okay, is it possible to do what I'm about to do? But here we go. So <clears throat> this is a two-step process. The first step is uh, send the curves to points. Second step, now vary the complex structure to smooth them out. So you put this X underline as the central fiber of a family of complex manifolds by varying the complex structure. Smooth, smooth this out to a family, say, XT, and uh, form a smoothing. So the form to form a complex structure of X underlying bar in such a way that when you look locally in these things, what you see is uh, smoothing of putting a T on the right hand side. So although locally, if you just look at one of these, right, so there's no problem just putting a T, but uh, the question is doing this, uh, achieving this as a global procedure. Um, yeah, attaining a, a global smoothing, which locally in these things looks like this. So this is what was studied in uh, Friedman's paper. And uh, he uh, wrote down a condition, Friedman's condition, which guarantees the existence of a, of a transition like this. And it's a condition on the uh, initial configuration of these curves here. So this sort of thing exists provided the, uh, the initial curves that you choose for this to exist, they have to be um, satisfied as Friedman's condition. Uh, so strictly speaking, Friedman only did the first order smoothing, and then uh, there's work by Tian and uh, Kawamata to do the higher order definition. So we need for this process to exist, there needs to be. Um, these curves have to be homologically linearly dependent in uh, H2. So there needs to exist uh, constants lambda i non zero. All the lambda i is non zero. <clears throat> uh, such that a relation like this holds. Uh, and then we can prove that uh, such a global transition exists. So for our purpose, real um, numbers? Yeah, pardon? Uh, yeah, real yeah. numbers. Are they integers or can be? No, they could be any real. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so this is the point of view from uh, yeah co co complex geometry, but uh, roughly at the level of topology, what's going on here is uh, so we're sending these p1s to points. So topologically, these are uh, s2s. So the level of topology, we're switching. Uh, S2 cross B4. <coughs> and um, what happens on this side here, the process of adding a T, adding a T on the right hand side here, topologically, you can look at what uh, it's doing, that's inserting an S3. The S3 is the vanishing cycle. Uh, so it's replacing the singular point by an S3. So topologically, you're switching an S2 to an S3. 
So this is at the rougher level of topology, what's going on? B3, maybe. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so this is a topological changing procedure. Um, we see that when we would do this, since we're killing some S2s, our uh, H11, H11 is going down. We write this two times before. Yeah, but is, is the normal bundle trigger for this? Um, I'm just being really, yeah, very rough of topology here. Uh, yeah, but it's true, yeah. Yeah, you can't really it's true. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, but holomorphically not. Right? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, so H11 is going down because we're removing two steers, and H21, the third bed number, is going to be going up. This. Procedure here decreases H11, increases H21, so we move from two threefolds with different punch numbers. So here's the first observation for our talk today. What will happen that H11 goes to zero? So just a very, very stupid question. It, 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 it doesn't mean that like it goes down by the number of curves or up. Yeah, so if you want to understand that, right? Yeah, so you can do some, yeah, Meyer, Meyer via Taurus and see, uh, track what's going to go down. So this is going to go down by the number of lin linearly, how many, so you take a whole bunch of curves, how many linearly independent ones you got, that's going to drop it. And then this is going to go up by compensating. It's going to be like uh, the number you contracted uh, minus how many linearly independent ones were, and maybe, oh yeah, maybe that's it, something like that. Um, okay. Yeah, so yeah, if you want to just track, just using this, using Meyer via Taurus, you'll see kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's with, yeah, how many, how many curves you, you're choosing, how many of them were truly uh, the dependent ones, uh, in, in, in the dependent ones, yeah. Um, but anyway, so, if you contract too many spheres, you can kill your second homology. Um, this isn't uh, this isn't only reserved for the perverts out there. <laughs> this, this is uh, you know a pretty standard thing that can happen if you just start with the quintic, right? Like we all know quintic has h11 is one. You do this, it's going to go to zero, right? So a very simple example, e.g., you just start from the quintic, take two curves, contract them, boom, you've left uh, Taylor geometry, right? So e.g., quintic, start from the quintic. One goes down, it's going to go to zero. This is in uh, Friedman's paper, sometimes also called Clemens Friedman manifolds. Clemens also looked at Clemens. Like a huge. Yeah. So, this uh, output of this operation here, XT, this is a compact complex manifold. Uh, you can prove it still has trivial canonical bundle. Still has a holomorphic volume form. Um, but uh, you, you're not going to, in general, see a killer metric on this thing. So you see, we, we set out to understand the killer ones, and um, there's this process for going from one. So, so it, it, can't, it often goes from one Kähler to another Kähler, um, but this suggests that maybe we should include in our parameter space uh, some more objects. So we should include maybe these limit points, uh, these non-Kähler threefolds, not all non-Kähler threefolds, there's way too many of those, right? But just put in just the ones that can be connected, just the ones that can be reached by the Kähler ones. Put those into our, our parameter space, and that's the space of threefolds that we'd, we'd like to understand. So our, our goal um, as, a, as, a, as, a diff uh, as a differential geometer, I want to, we're, we're, with the program, in, 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 from a point of view of differential geometry, is we want a unifying set of equations. We want a unifying geometry on all these threefolds in this parameter space um, that can be used on all of them, Kähler, non-Kähler, 
Sometimes it's chaos, sometimes it's not, but we want to use the same unifying set of equations to understand them. And it, it can't be equations from Kähler geometry because they don't always happen. So we're looking for um, kind of a uniform find. I want to uniformize all these objects by uh, structures in, in, in differential geometry. So in the right in the Kähler setting, if this transition were Kähler to Kähler, we all agree Kähler Ricci flat metrics are the best metrics to put on there. This is Yao's theorem. In the Kähler case, we want to understand these objects using uh, Kähler Ricci flat metrics. And the question is, uh, what's the analog of a uh, Kähler Ricci flat metric uh, for general XT that comes out of a transition like this and uh, may or may not be Kähler? Uh, I can go on this side, I suppose. And erase information on the thing. Oh, no, that's all right. That's all right. I, I, two boards is plenty. Okay, so, so Yao's uh, conjecture on this, on what uh, could be the right analog uh, is, is this, is, is rather than looking for a single Kähler Ricci flat metric, uh, we look for a pair of metrics. Pair of metrics. H two metrics on the tangent bundle, and uh, these metrics should solve some generalization of Kähler Ricci flat. And where would those equations come from? Uh, they'd be inspired by equations coming in string theory. So what are these <clears throat> equations from string theory or where? Let's start with what are the results? So this has been um, right, the yeah, program for the past 20 years and various people have worked on it. So here's what's known. So there exists, maybe I'll write it on this. Yeah, what kind of metrics uh, can we put on this output, this XT? So the first result was Fu Liao constructing the first metric G. This is constructing a metric G solving uh, this closeness condition. So uh, maybe I'll put down here this omega is the one coming from G. So omega is the two, two form coming from G. So they constructed uh, a balanced metric. You don't get d omega zero, but uh, you get a metric with uh, d omega squared is zero. And um, the second metric H, this was constructed in joint work with Tristan Collins and Yao. I got a second metric H solving. So we're trying to uh, encapsulate some generalization of Kähler Ricci flat splits into two metrics. The omega squared kind of has a closeness part, kind of a Ricci flat part. Um, it's kind of a decoupling where we solve Yang Mills on the tangent bundle. So we solve omega squared, it's this omega here. Okay, so the curvature. So, of course, um, 
Kill Ricci flat metrics, you just take the same one and then it's closed. And then this is a Ricci flat and it's contracting with itself. <clears throat> but this is a little bit less nonlinear. It breaks apart into two metrics and now it's one metric taking the traces. It's a different one. Okay, maybe you can mention that since there is a holomorphic volume form, you can conform every scale omega to one which has bismuth flat, uh, bismuth Ricci flat. Uh, So for simplicity, uh, I'm going to be working with this, but uh, so these XTs do have holomorphic volume form. And when you have a holomorphic volume form, you can go back and forth between uh, these two metrics by conformal rescaling. So you have one that's balanced. You can produce a conformally balanced one by conformally scaling with this and vice versa. Um, and um, so there's this point of view, which is the whole Storminger system, but we'll, we'll just take this one. And as you said, uh, this has a, uh, Holomy uh, interpretation here, which is the <clears throat> bismuth collection has a uh, holonomy uh, SU3. Uh, so what I said was not, it's not such a straightforward story, right? I said, oh, well, you know, we want to incorporate some kind of closeness property. This metric has a closeness property, but it, you know, this also has a holonomy uh, interpretation and this also has a whole room interpretation so it's everything's kind of mixed together <laughs> but yeah so thanks that's a good point so um right in the general theme of like what kind of structures are invariant or preserved through these transitions you lose the Kalerness, but uh, you retain some properties and one that you retain is you still retain a whole nomi condition through the transition uh, it becomes this one so that's a good point here in the first two lines omega is the same and in the next line it's a different omega it's a different metric right this is the same one yeah and then h is a different one Oh. Yeah, so um, there's another way to, so there are many ways to write all these equations. Um, but I pointed out one, I'm gonna write even another way in terms of the, what's called the, the field content in string theory. So there's a two form field Which strength and the three form. What is FH? Yeah, that's right. So let me do that right now. Yeah, so let's write this in terms of the field content. So there's a three, three, form, three form field strength, that's H, which is produced from little omega in this way. Uh, and then there's a two form field strength, which is produced from H, which is our, the uh, curvature of the turn connection of the metric H. And uh, we can, there's an equivalent way to recast these. Well, this one's easy, but this one, there's a manipulation to write it another way in terms of H. So this is equivalent to another way to write it. It's, I like indices, so uh, you know, I also got to write this using indices. There's a way to manipulate this and this. This is just different ways of writing the same thing. Um, and this, of course, is this. So these are kind of uh, what kind of Yang Mills uh, type equations one for the three form field strength and one for the two form field strength. Um, so this is, like, this is just another way to recast these two equations here uh, in terms of the field content. Um, there's another way to recast this whole thing from the uh, point of view of supersymmetry. So yeah, right, where did these equations come from? Why did we expect these to come up? So this comes from <clears throat> equations from supersymmetry and in, in, in strength here, and those are usually written in terms of a spinner. And uh, in terms of a spinner that creates the complex structure, these equations here are usually written uh, like this. However, Eight is a spinner, so this is, I don't know, super symmetry point of view with spinners. Um, but so anyway, so one way to interpret our results here is this um, conifold transition uh, preserves supersymmetry, or these supersymmetries are, are preserved through the transition. So these supersymmetric equations, even though you, you go through the transition, you lose the Kalo property, but you still retain some equations from supersymmetry, uh, namely these, these ones here. And we repass this, which is so this is one way to interpret these results here is uh, supersymmetry is preserved through the conical transition. Uh, another way to interpret this is in terms of uh, stability of the tension bundle. Because um, as we know with this Donaldson, Newland, McGow correspondence, Yang Mills metrics and stability uh, have to do with each other. So, corollary of this is all Calabial three folds that are connected to. Taylor Claudia out three folds, the conifold transition. So these ones I mean by definition, these are by definition all the ones that are in this Claudia web, all the ones that can be reached by conifold transitions, sometimes Kaler, sometimes non-Kaler. 
all the non kilo ones that can be connected to the kilo ones, they have stable uh, tangent bundle. Um, so this is uh, <clears throat> another sort of like non kahler version of Yao's theorem, right? So, so, so Yao's theorem in the Kahler case, when you have a kahler ritchie flat metric, that can be proved, uh, that can be used to prove that the tangent bundle of the kahler cloud Yao is stable. In this more general context, we lose the, the kahler property as we go through. It's not necessarily kahler, but we still retain the stable property. So it's kind of like a yeah, non kilo version of Yao's theorem. I mean, you still have stability to the tension level. And uh, yeah, it's also this kind of pair stability of it. You know, now there's a two form and a three form. And they both solve this equation together. Um, so, yeah. And of course, there are a lot of non kahler Kalab Yao's, uh, even some that people have constructed. Uh, uh, solutions to this uh, whole Strominger system, they don't have stable tangent bundle. Yeah, solutions don't have, right? So that means that they can't be plugged into this web here. They're not connected to the cable ones by conifold transition. They're in some other region of the landscape, but they're not uh, in this component here. So it's, it's a way to rule out stuff. It's never going to be connected by conifold transitions. The spinners, they, they satisfy the differential equation. Yeah, yeah, right, right. They're parallel. Yeah, they're, they're, they're uh, yeah. So they're, I didn't write all the equations. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, yeah. something like something like that. They're parallel with respect to the H connection. So Strominger proved if you have a spinner that's uh, positive parallelity and uh, parallel with respect to the H connection and satisfies this De Latino equation, <clears throat> then uh, the complex structure you get from that spinner is uh, integrable. And uh, it satisfies this uh, translated the language between this and uh, this formalism. Also, we have also this part is of it, that is it possible to follow that spinner as, as it degenerates. Oh, I haven't done that's a good uh, yeah, I uh, across this thing. Yeah, no, I haven't. That's a good question. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know. Uh, so, the spinner is accomplished after what they mean. Yeah, like just follow like the complex. Oh, yeah, I'm just wondering if the spinner satisfies an equation on the total space. Family. Oh. And yes, the one. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned supersymmetry. <laughs> Is there um, interpretation of this process at the level of some string type description? That would tell you that the supersymmetry should be precise. Oh, yeah, I would love to know that. Yeah, yeah. So, if a physicist could tell me about that, I would love to hear oh, about it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, Eric, <laughs> yeah, please, please tell us all about it. I'd love to hear this. Yeah. No, I had a different question. Now. Okay. So, I don't know, and I'd love to learn that uh, point of view on this. I just did the hardcore PD stuff. I don't know. I, I want to know more about the physics reasons. Yeah. So, uh, for H, you imposed the Bianchi? No, no. So, this is an open, uh, open problem. This is the missing piece, right? So we only did the supersymmetry sector. I can't handle the anomaly sector. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> I've been trying. Maybe one day someone will do it, but uh, it's an open problem. So there are other, right? So that's why I pose this very vaguely. <laughs> so there are other equations maybe uh, expected from string theory. Yeah, yeah. So just, this is just a comment, meaning the quantifold transitions to string theory was on type two theory space. Not in this context. These equations are more for the closing. That's right. So, so um, for for type two, I mean, this was understood in terms of not just the mathematical precision, um, but also, I mean, the, in the strings, you, you also have brains. That's right. That, that, that go along with the transition. That's right. So the story is quite more more important than just the geometry of the transition. So, uh, so. Here, you will need the bundle and the and the gas there. Yeah. And the half of the transition relation. Yes. This is why. This is a open problem. Right? So, and I mean, the geometry of the bundle is that the geometry of the base, but the two ends. 
That's right. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah. much, 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 much to be done. Um, that's right. Right. So this is right. So this is where. So we're not. So I haven't uh, completely completed. Well, we have not at all completed this program here. There's, see, Kayla Ritchie thought metrics have a lot of structure. So we want to recapture something that still has kind of as much structure. So you know, we still want to put a lot of constraints on our objects. And uh, this is not enough. It's expected there should be even more constraint. I think it's the visual uh, equation. Maybe. So yes, yeah, I So this. The, the construction is what for like small t transitioning from. Oh, the, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So stuff, my bad. Yeah, yeah. For all t. Yeah, sorry. I forgot. And this, it's like starting from a k. That's right. And and it's all three equations. So those three on the left. Uh, just these two. I mean, this one is two. Doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So, So we also have, right, so we have these global objects on the compact manifold. <clears throat> and what we want to understand is the local picture. We have the global non kähler objects. And now we want to zoom in and look at near the nodes uh, and see who we, we understand what's happening. So the local description. So these are objects all out on this compact killer manifold. But what if we restrict our attention and look <clears throat> look in this neighborhood here? Uh, do we rec do we see what do we see? So here's what we see. So, the, so let me explain what is so writing GCO signing for uh, Candelas and Delosa because Candelas and Delosa worked out the local model for what should <coughs> happen uh, just around these nodes at the level of metrics. So let's let's review that and then I'll come back to this. So it's already minor equal than C mod D. Yeah, that's just the modulus of this uh, deformation parameter. And there's some lambda from the analysis of the decay rate is very small. Let's just look at the local local picture. So this uh, <coughs> nodal singularity sum of psi squared is equal to zero, sitting inside of C four. Uh, can draw it as a cone because you have a point there. You scale it by uh, lambda; it's still in there, so we can <coughs> draw it as a cone. And um, so, can the and the found uh, Kilrichi flat metrics by uh, looking in a radial ansatz. So it's uh, the norm of Z. I'll just be the sum of one squared. And it uh, turns out uh, it's good to use this power r. It's going to turn out to be the intrinsic radius of this uh, cone metric. Anyway, so the, uh, on this space, there are uh, Kähler Ricci flat metrics. Cone metrics, which are the form I D bar of R squared. Um, so if you uh, set up a radial ansatz, say, and look for solutions which look like f of norm z, um, and uh, you plug that into the Ricci flat <coughs> equation, you'll get a ODE. Solve the ODE, and it, for, for this, it turns out to be just this simple expression. This is power of um, two thirds. So these are Kaler, Kaler Ritchie flat. Oops. Why two thirds? That's what happens. <laughs> and, uh, that's the solution, <laughs> solution to the ODE. I always care about, I mean, I always wonder about it. Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, yeah, is there a reason, like, yeah, why? Is there a reason to predict you have this extrinsic radius and then you have this intrinsic? Is there a way to predict what the power should be? Maybe all via scaling. There surely is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There surely is via scaling. Yeah, yeah. Should be with a billet or not? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So you look at the yeah, you look at the model holomorphic three form. That's right. That's what you do. Yeah, you look at the model holomorphic three form. You look at this, 
if you're scaling on your cone and you'll see what power you got to have, otherwise it's never going to happen. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's where it's going to come from. Yeah. Yeah, use the model uh, dz1 or dz2 3 divided by z4 or something on some patch. Um, anyway, so, uh, so that's on one. Um, and I want about the smoothing here. So we can call this uh, the v0 and the smoothing vt. And uh, so here, you have a family of metrics, Candela Solosa metrics for all T. And uh, these ones, uh, there's a F <coughs> that you can obtain by solving a ODE that uh, I won't write explicitly. But you get this family by this radial lens as Keeler Ritchie flat metrics. And uh, as you send T to zero in a suitable sense, they go back to this conical metric. Uh, in fact, these are. It's called asymptotically conical uh, metrics. So, so this was a local picture. So this is all Taylor. Right? And so go, yeah. is there also a model in the smooth in the blower and in the right, resolution? Right, that's right. Uh, so yeah, and then Kendall also 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 had a family. I don't know <laughs> on the small resolution that goes in here. Yeah, that's right. Which. Uh, Right, so I'm just focusing on the smoothing side, but it's, yeah, it goes small resolution, sends the area of P1 to zero. Uh, then you get this. And then now the vanishing cycles appear, right? And then you get this. Oh yeah, and also <clears throat> with respect to these candela stelosa metrics, the uh, vanishing cycle here is a special Lagrangian three sphere. That's another nice note. Um, so anyways, so back to our uh, global picture. So here, um, compact manifolds, they do not admit the Kähler metric. They're global, non kähler However, when you look in close to these model singularities, what do you see? So we have a pair of metrics. <clears throat> and what do you see when you look in locally? These metrics both go back to this model, kind of, uh, asymptotically. So um, I guess, roughly speaking, like in this, here there is an explicit. Kähler Ritchie flat metric. So the, the metric shouldn't have had to break apart into two pieces. It didn't need to. There's already a great metric right there. It didn't need to break apart. The reason it breaks apart is because of maybe more global effects out on the compact Kähler manifold. So when you look in locally near the nodes, you still see this model. Um, plus, but not exactly. So these global metrics, they also have some global non Kähler corrections. What we showed is these non these global non killer corrections are small near the nodes, so there are small error, small non error, small non killer error terms as you go in to the nodes. So that's kind of what this um, thing here. So some kind of local uniqueness theorem. Uh, you have a solution to PD on the compact thing. You look in locally, and then you know what you see. What happens with the norm of HP? So with the DCO formula, yeah, yeah. This one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's a, uh, yeah, yeah, we have estimates. Uh, I only have the rough ones. I don't know about this more delicate thing. That's actually should be understood very well if you want to try to understand this. But very broadly, I just know estimates for derivatives like this. And there's some, just with the right scaling. Uh, yeah, we can also, this is just a C0 estimate. You can do CK estimates. You also have to wait by R to the minus K or something, or some scaling thing. But yeah, we have all the higher order estimates. But I don't have a refined understanding of particularly something that looks like this. And I think this needs to be understood to properly attack this. Um, okay, well, uh, so are you saying that you're referring to th is equal to ff or minus rr? Or yeah, I'm being very vague because I, okay. I don't know. I was just right up like five minutes before this talk. Talking with Senya there also is telling me, no, no, it's not that. You have to add the five brain. <laughs> don't forget the five brain. <laughs> so I, I don't want to write it because it's probably not going to be what should happen because I forgot about the five brain. But that's, <laughs> the, that's I just don't know what, what you what you mean. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So all right, let's let's, let's write it. Uh, the naive one, which is probably not correct. So here's the naive one. Uh, there's going to be a lot of <clears throat> objections from the audience. But uh, the first thing would be to try to solve something like this, perturb this pair. These would be two metrics, both on the tangent bundle. Uh, this would be, the, say, the term connection of 
this metric this is the turn connection of that metric on the tangent bundle, and we'd want to solve this. Um, maybe it's too naive to take this gauge bundle to be exactly the tangent bundle. Maybe there's some mechanism which generates a gauge bundle from the tangent bundle, which is not just the tangent bundle. I don't know what it is. It could be TX plus, maybe there's a flat thing that you put in there and then you deform. So this should be on that. I don't know. And then apparently I'm missing a term. There's plus some Poincare dual four form thing there, which comes from Spanish in the cycle of the period. You know, so I, I don't know. Let's see. Yes, there's one comment. Yeah. Oh, know, yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. If you literally write that thing, yeah. this is going to, the right hand side is going to vanish because the tangent bundle you prove is stable. Yeah. And then up to a complex gauge transformation, you can take G to the H. And then this thing is going to identically vanish. So you cannot put that thing. This is not going to be possible if you want an non killer mm. solution. Yeah, but you said you might deform the bundle. So well, maybe it's not the tangent. Yeah, right. But with, that's right. But why would I take G to the H? Because I need this one. Uh, anyway. Yeah, these are, well, we can talk about this. Yeah, I think I, I, I'm not sure it can be immediately ruled out. But, anyways, yeah, so schematically like this. Yeah. My impression was that Fu Yao did solve that, but maybe there's issues there. Nope, 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 nope. No, certainly not. Yeah. Yeah, they only got this. And uh, you might be thinking of Fu Yao and the. Yeah, oh, that's, that's a different thing. That's a different thing. Yeah, so that's another uh, non KO threefold. Um, and they do solve that. But uh, our result, and there's other ways to show it, but uh, those threefolds are not connected in this web. They're in some other sector because those solutions don't have stable tangent model. And we proved that it has to have. There's another way to do it. Friedman also proved that DD Barlam has preserved for these things. Uh, that's another way to rule out stuff that couldn't be, could be uh, connected in this web. Okay. One last thing I want to mention in some direction. So this is the theme of um, this transition and looking for objects, supersymmetric equations. <clears throat> supersymmetric equations also single out uh, optimal submanifolds. And so we want to look in this context, what would be some optimal submanifolds? So very broadly, have uh, non killer Flavial. Like what are optimal or extreme or yeah, I don't know, optimal cycles, special cycles. So what we're gonna look at is uh, three forms, <coughs> uh, sorry, three three cycles. So we can take a class three X, and then we can take the functional which sends a representative of this homology class. <clears throat> integrates over it. Um, the uh, area, but changed by this uh, conformal factor. So the side remark, this here, um, I guess you could call it the, 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 the dialoton functional. So something like this was, if you integrate over not L, but the whole manifold, so this thing here appeared. It's a dialoton function. Um, and uh, it was shown Garcia Fernandez and Rio Shabazi Tipler uh, that balanced metrics This equation here that we saw earlier, it arises as critical points of this functional and restricted to variations in a certain subspace. Uh, so this is critical points. Certain subspace. Um, anyway, so all we thought was, uh, okay, well, our geometry has this, comes as critical points of this. So let's just take the same functional. Um, Acted on submanifolds and see which are the extreme um, submanifolds with respect to this uh, functional. And uh, so this was done, this was already done. 
1982 by Harvey and Lawson. That uh, minimizers of this in this class uh, are equivalent to um, special Lagrangian equations, which are that little omega should restrict to zero on L, and the imaginary part of capital omega, there might be a constant angle here, should also restrict to zero on L. So there are these uh, nice uh, compact elegant equations, uh, which exactly tell you when you can uh, extremize uh, this functional. Uh, there's also a sp spinner proof uh, by uh, so Becker Becker Strominger later rediscovered this uh, by supersymmetric uh, proof uh, using spinners. And uh, their derivation also goes through uh, in the more general uh, Strominger, Mon Taylor, um, Claudia Jean. So what, what is theta hat? It's some base. Yeah, just some constant. It comes from integrating uh, capital omega, I guess. So do you need another like, assumption here? I mean, are you saying, because I mean, suppose you're in the Calabial case. Yeah. So omega has more than one. All right. Yeah, yeah that's it. So this looks a bit suspicious to me. Do you, do, yeah. do, you need, do you need another constraint? Because then you're saying only special Lagrangians are volume minimizing. Couldn't there be, I mean, you just take a class where there's no special Lagrangian. Right. You can still minimize volume in that class. There will be some. Oh, that's true. It's if there are, you already know there's one, it has to be that one. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So okay, you, this you is didn't... not, so this is. I don't need to nip an only. Yeah, you know what? Let's start with <laughs> Let's go this way. Hey, this <laughs> is true. Let's go this, this way. Is true. Let's go this way. Oh. Yeah, I was just thinking of this identity here, that, that topological one, right? which is like this is equal to. And, you know, yeah, no, this I agree. With. Yeah, yeah. But then I misinterpreted it. Yeah, plus, and then there's a norm of p squared, and this vanishes exactly when this yeah, is that. So then. So I thought you could go the other way, but I guess you're right. Because no, because you don't know there's a minimum. You don't know this is going to go to zero. Yeah, okay, thank you. Good point. Good point. So the, the it's sloppy. So the, what are the other minimizers? You don't know. You know, man. Yeah. It, it, except something else. It's like if you take take a bundle which is not stable, you try to minimize the angle. Yeah, right. It's just going to what, what, what is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so last thing is state uh, my theorem with Jason Collins. So I'll draw the picture again. So we now have a sequence of um, <clears throat> balanced metrics kind of realizing this geometrically. So this is a sequence as A goes to zero. So they're all balanced. As A goes to zero, the volume of these, each of these holomorphic curves uh, is going to zero. So recall CR, these are holomorphic curves. We have a sequence, so Fu Liao did this. <clears throat> they constructed the balance metrics, realizing this, the generation of the curves to a point. And then here they also have their Balance metrics on the smoothing. Uh, so here we call Li to be the vanishing cycle. So this takes the volume of and um, what we prove is that uh, these vanishing cycles uh, can be taken to be special Lagrangian. Um, so here. Special Lagrangian three spheres. So this, the volume of the, uh, of with the respect, yeah. so the omega A's are balanced, and the reason the, the volume is going to zero is because they are close enough to the Calabio. Okay, that's right. So the fully out construction, it's uh, yeah, it's a gluing that locally uses that model Candelas-Solasa model. So the Candelas-Solasa model sends the curves to zero, and uh, so do these global non kähler ones. And then the Candelas de Lassa model, the vanishing cycle is special Lagrangian. Um, so here we have the global one, which locally looks like the Candelas de Lassa plus the global non kähler contributions. 
And so to prove the theorem, you just have to control those errors. You have to show that those non-Kähler global errors can be made small enough so that you can perturb the vanishing cycle. It's not the same vanishing cycle. It got moved a little bit, adjusted a little bit so that it solves these global equations with respect to the global omegas, not the local model ones. <coughs> so, uh, so, yeah, so that's... Uh, so from the yeah, sub-manifold point of view, this um, conifold transition, which at the level of topology switches S2 for S3, realize that geometrically it's switching a holomorphic curve for a special Lagrangian cycle. We're putting more geometry on there. Can I ask you just to repeat because you, you, say, you say something about local model is special Lagrangian, but then yeah. we loop back perhaps the form it a little. That's right. And then somehow it can do the analysis so that you can find the special Lagrangian still nearby. That's right. That's right. Yes, yeah, exactly what you said. Yeah. In the same isotopic class or yeah, yeah. same. What isotope? I, yeah. I, I don't know what isotope class. I, mean, I, I don't have Lagrangian, man. I don't have D omega zero. I didn't say Hamilton. Oh, oh, you didn't say Hamilton. Oh, 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 you mean like. Uh, so, what, what is preserved when you do the deformation? Probably just a graph of it. Yeah, yeah, it's just a graph of one forms. <coughs> yeah, I, I just take uh, deformations by a normal vector that looks like J times uh, something uh, <coughs> um, tangential, and then I deform in that way. I look, I look, I look for that. Uh, Deformation that's going to do the job. So, is it a consequence that we prove that they're rigid? Yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah, no, we also proved that they're rigid. Yes. So, uh, yeah, 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 had to prove they're rigid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they could have picked up some stuff, but uh, the errors were small enough that they're still rigid. Yeah. Is there any specific behavior or interplay between the torsion of omega t and the special Lagrangian? Or you don't see anything? Yeah, so the, the linearized operator, so now if you say so you want to look at the space of deformations of these objects, so as we all know in um, McLean's theorem or whatever, um, your one form on the L right, has to solve uh, um, these equations at the, for the infinitesimal deformation. Um, but in this case, uh, this equation here becomes uh, torsion comes in. Uh, and uh, this is a one form, this is a three form. It like gets contracted out, uh, and maybe the J comes in, something like that. There's a torsion contribution to the linearized operator. And in general, I'm having a hard time understanding the structure of this. In this case, we can handle it because these non kähler contributions by our estimates are small <laughs> in, the, in the neighborhood, but. Uh, if we're not in this setting, uh, the structure of this thing remains to be uh, understood. So you're talking about deformations of special Lagrangians in a non-kähler background. That's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah, how the torsion, how the torsion plays a role, plays a role in, in the deformation theory. Analyze this problem and this result, and it's the first time that such a thing was analyzed. I guess. Nah, I mean, I would say that we went deeper, <laughs> but but some people uh, and some physicists had 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 that. had Post stuff like that, uh, you know, um, dropping all sorts of, you know, sometimes they draw, I don't know, drop integrability of complex, drop all sorts of integrability assumptions. Um, so, no, people had also done this. But, uh, but anyways, they, they, they came up, they're relevant in this specific problem as well. Came up with and you, you wanted this because you wanted that minimi minimality or yeah, yeah, right, right. We, we wanted to realize this uh, geometrically. This uh, S2 goes to S3 as optimal geometric objects. What, what are they? Like in terms of this global geometry, because um, these extremize uh, area functional <laughs> as holomorphic submanifolds, uh, and then they disappear. And then in this theme, that there should be some supersymmetry preserved, there should be some supersymmetric object that appears on the other side. The curve went away, and then who appeared? Uh, it's a three cycle, and so we thought that it would be a special Lagrangian. Um, in the Kähler case, this was, I mean, this is, if you go back to this kind of also, also local model, I mean, this is exactly what, and Strominger has a physics interpretation of this, uh, all in the Kähler case, but we just went for the non-Kähler analog of what was, yeah, it's not. Yeah. What is the interpretation? 
We'll have to ask. <laughs> I still don't understand uh, what, what Strominger did uh, to interpret this. Uh, what, what, how did Strominger interpret this in terms of brains and submanifolds, right? The, that these disappear, right? And then these appear. And, and how is that consistent? Before the, before the it was just a, This is right. This is not the heterotic case. Yeah, this is more the type two B. So, so that, that is yeah. Just the idea. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or type two. I mean, you might want to drop some of the constraints of the HRT structure. So the heterotic constraints more. Oh, it does. It constrains more than the type. Oh, type two, two. That's allowed. It doesn't need to be this one. It can be even a more. I see. So, so you don't even need. I see. So it would be interesting to see whether you can apply some some of these here. I mean, at least this is true for me. Right. And whether you can you can do that to improve the rate what's wrong with the position of the work. So I think I think it's yeah, so I, yeah, I'd, I'd like to yeah, under, understand the yeah, physical intuition explanation for because uh, right because the general theme is like this sh there should be some continuity. So the, the, the physics should vary continuously, even though this is a discontinuous transition. Right? That's right. That, that's the guiding principle. Right? And I think the guiding principle for geometry should be in the right topology, the geometric object should also vary continuously despite the Hodge numbers jumping. But uh, this is all absolute okay. speculation. <laughs> Okay. I see, and that's the part I have yet to understand. So. The complicated part. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Anyway, so thanks for your attention. <laughs>
Mario said at the beginning, which metric is, is it achieved from? Or you said it, but I, I didn't quite. Oh, is this the whole only? Um, oh, yeah, no, sorry, it is. Yeah, it is. It is yeah, the, uh, the balance one. Yeah, the balance one. Yeah. No, no, it's the, the conformity balance. The conform yeah, sorry, the, yeah, balance. Yeah, the conformally balanced one. If you have a holomorphic volume form and you're conformally balanced, your bismuth is flat. If you have a holomorphic volume form, you can go back and forth from the balance to the conformally yeah. balanced one. The conformally balanced one is the one who has zero millimeters. Which is the case. If, if we want to interpret this in, in type 2 B string theory, I guess. And there are these type to be equations proposed by right. Zhao and right. Right. and Seng and yeah. I, I don't know to what extent this disappears. Oh, we tried so hard. I don't know. Zhao. I have nothing to tell you. I wish I, I just don't care. Yeah, but my, my point is, yeah. can you give some control on DDC of omega t and related that, to some that sort is of once, five range source? Once you understand this, you understand. <laughs> Yeah, then maybe it could, we could do an all the cancellation. Maybe we could do these type of the equations. Yeah, it's all about understanding. Can you explain what you mean when you, you keep repeating anomaly cancellation problem? Yeah. But I don't know what you were talking about. Oh, yeah, just that. Just that. Just this one. The identity again. Oh, yeah, it has one. I usually don't call it the identity again, but sometimes. But the, the point is that the more general. Equation has also some NS5 range sources, yeah. which are localized in some holomorphic curve. And then if you drop the bundles, and you are in this step to be equated, I guess. This is on the left side of this uh, process, or the right side? Right side. It should appear on the, on the right side. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, this is from heterotic. So, yeah, there's always sectors of string theory. These are equations from heterotic. There's uh, also other. Uh, is it? Is it this one you were talking about, Mario? The other one? Yeah, this is just also a base. Yeah. base oh, it's just so this one. Just take yeah, out this thing. This yeah, is, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. mathematically, yeah. there is no much difference. Just dropping the bound. Yeah. Physically, I guess it makes a big difference. Um, okay. So anyway, so at a high level, right? What, what we want to do is we want to rigidify these, these metrics. So right, what's missing, brutally missing, is uniqueness statement. Are, why are these 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 fully out metrics? You showed all these nice properties, and and Yao believes they should be unique in some sense. They should be distinguished in some sense. But we don't have enough equations. There's too many balanced metrics. We need an additional equation to impose, which would rigify it and be like this is the best metric. And so we would hope that by imposing an additional equation such as this one, or maybe forget about this one and then just put this, which comes from that. But then you know you guys have progress on uniqueness for Holtz Schrödinger, but it's still not completely resolved. So even if we could construct this, we wouldn't have a uniqueness statement at this point, but maybe at the end of the program, if we'd have a uniqueness statement, we'd have a solution that we'd have some kind of rigidity or uniqueness why this is the best metric, but this is still part of the program. So Just we're missing an equation. You need to fix the torsion. The you need to fix something, yeah. 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 Make it. <clears throat> yeah. Can, can you just, based on what you understand about this problem, how should the moduli spaces on the left and on the right be stuck together? Yeah, I don't know. This is definitely something we, yeah, like to understand. Like, say you now you do like a variation of some parameter here, then it goes through. What happened here? Yes, that's the question, and I don't know. I'd love to explore that. I, uh, but, but are you imagining that you have like these two different moduli spaces that are intersecting in some way? Or I that... guess so. Yeah. Like in the complex side, of course, you're, you're kind of thinking of a path going from one side to the other. But on the complex yeah. side, there is already some certification because you can also have the, yeah. the flaw. Right. So like there is already like in the complex side, there's already a wall of singularities that are yeah. going through, and yeah. there's another wall of singularities yeah. that goes to the, That's right. So like how, how, like you have like some sort of like a wall. yeah. <laughs> it should be mirrored to to the ensembling of the Keller cones for flops. Okay. So for flops, you can yeah. somehow ensemble the Keller cones. By the boundary, and here this is like the mirror process, and these complex structure modular spaces can be ensembled in the boundary in this coin fold process. Yeah. Uh, any more questions or comments? Well, let's thank Sebastian again. Yeah.